Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to execute Linux shell script in Jenkins. In this video, we would consider freestyle job. In the next video, we would try to implement the same using Jenkins pipeline. Here, we would see how to execute the script. If the script is present in the Jenkins agent or master, we will also see how to execute the script if it is present in some version control tool like git and we'll see how to send the parameters to the shell script from the Jenkins job and also we'll see how to collect the output of the shell script inside the Jenkins job. Let us start. So for the demo, this is the Jenkins instance. For this demo, we have already set up the agent. The agent is connected to the master and this is the label assigned to this agent. So let us try to execute the shell script in this agent for the demo. So for that, let us create a job. Let us enter the name here. Let us select freestyle job. In the first scenario, the script will be already present in the agent. So we need to execute the script. So let us go to the agent. So this is the Jenkins agent machine. Here let us try to create an example script. So for that I will create an example directory. Here I have added hostname command to the demo1.sh script. Let us verify that. So this script contains hostname. So now let us try to execute this script from the Jenkins job. So in the Jenkins job, since we don't have any source code management now, because our script is already present in the agent, so let us click on this and we'll keep this as none. So now we need to mention where exactly we are executing the job. So here we need to provide the label expression here. Here the label of the agent is agent Linux. So we need to select that. And then we can go to build steps. Here we need to select execute shell. Here we need to provide all the commands here. If we want to use the existing environment variables inside this session, we can use this. Here we can see lot of environment variables like job name, build tag, executor number, workspace and all. These environment variables we can use in the script. So this is a sample command. And here let us try to execute the script. So by default, when we try to execute any shell script from the freestyle job, the path of the script will be relative to the workspace. So if we don't provide any path, then it will try to search that script inside the workspace. But here we have a different path for the script. So we need to mention the full path or we need to go into the directory where the script is present. We can execute from there. So let us provide the full path here. So in this path, we need to provide the name of the script. So this is the full path of the script. Now let us save this configuration and execute. So here the script is failed. The reason is we don't have permissions to execute the script. So let us provide the permissions from the job configuration. So for that, let me use chmod. So here I am providing execute permission for the user. Here the user is the user with which the agent is running. We have provided the permission to the script. Let us save this configuration. Now we can execute again. So now we can see that the script is successful and it has printed the name of the host. So two things we have to take care here. One is providing the permission for the script and also we need to provide the full path of the script when we execute it. In the second scenario, let us consider executing the script which is present in the version control tool, for example, git. So for this demo, I am using an example repository. Here I have an example script. So let us try to execute this script inside the agent. So now we need to change the job configuration to get the code from GitHub to the agent. So here we need to change the source code management. So we need to provide git here and we need to enter the repository URL. So let me copy the URL. I have already set up the public key here and also I have created a credential with the private key of the agent inside Jenkins. So let us use them. So for the credentials, so this is the key I am using which is already set up as part of the credentials. The branch of the GitHub repository is main. So here we need to execute the example script which is present in the repository. So let me remove these things. So before executing the script, we need to understand that when the GitHub repository is cloned inside the agent, the script will be present inside the workspace. So 
either we can provide the full path including the workspace or the path of the script related to the workspace so let us print the workspace here so here we can execute directly like this because this is present directly inside the workspace that means this path is related to the workspace or we can specify the full path we can provide either of these two paths for executing this example.sh. Let us try to execute both the ways. So before that we need to provide the permission for the script. So here we have provided the permission. Now let us save the configuration and execute the job. First it will try to clone the repository inside the Jenkins agent. So here we can see that uh, the job is successful. So this is the workspace it has printed. After that it has provided the permission for the script which is present inside the workspace. And then it has executed the script related to the workspace. So this is the full path of the script. So this is also executed successfully. Now consider the third case in which we need to send the parameters for the shell script which is being executed. For this let us change the script to accept the parameters. So I am changing the script here itself. So these are the example parameters. So this is the first parameter for the script. And this is the second parameter. So let us try to print these parameters. So when we execute this script, this script will accept these two parameters and it will print these two parameters. So let us save this file. So now we need to change the job configuration to send the parameters for this script. So let us go to the job. Here in the configuration, we need to select project is parameterized. Here we can add the parameters. For example, uh, for environment parameter, we can choose choice parameter. Here we can select different choices. For example, dev, QA, or all based on the project requirements. Let us add one more parameter, which is a string parameter, database name. So these parameters we need to send to the script now. So let us go to the build steps. So let us execute only once. Uh, let me comment this one. So here we need to add the argument. So let me add the environment parameter. And the second one is database name. So let us save this configuration. And execute. So here environment is a choice parameter. So we can choose either of these environments. For example QA. And here we can give the database name. So MyDB is an example here. And let us build the job. Now the job is getting executed. So here we can see that the script is executed successfully and these are the two parameters we are sending to the script and inside the script it has taken those parameters and it has printed environment is QA and database name is MyDB. So this is how we can send the parameters for a shell script from the Jenkins job using freestyle. Now let us consider the fourth scenario collecting or capturing the output of a shell script in the Jenkins job. Till now we have seen how the shell script is executed and the script is successful. But what we do if the script is failed? The script can be failed due to multiple reasons, maybe because of some business requirements or some syntax errors and so on. So based on these conditions, we need to properly exit our job, whether it is a success or a failure. So for example, let us change the script here. So let us try to add some command here, which is not correct so that the script will be failed. Here I am adding some erroneous command, a is equal to b plus c, which is not correct. So when we execute the script, it should fail. So let us commit the changes. Let us execute the job again. Here we can see that a command not found, so the script is failed. But how to capture this failure, so that we can write our custom messages in the job itself. We can capture this failure in the job itself by changing the configuration. So we can get the status of the previous command in a shell script using a variable called dollar question mark. So we can assign that status to a variable. For example, here result. So this dollar question mark will indicate whether the previous command is successful or failure. For example, if this is success, then this will be assigned a value of zero. If not, a non-zero value will be assigned to this variable. So we can use this result variable to write our own custom message to exit the job properly. So let's add a if condition here.
So here I have added an if condition. If the result is zero, then it will print the script is successful. Otherwise, it will print script is failed and exiting. And exit with one. One means it's a failure. That means the job will be failed. So here we can also print the value of result. So let us try to save this and execute again. Here the job is failed again, but here it has printed the previous failure command itself. It has not printed our custom failure message. So the reason for the previous failure message is, whenever Jenkins executes the shell, it will execute with an option iPhone E. That means it will execute with iPhone E here. This means whenever any command is failed in the execution, then it will exit with the failure. To overcome that, we can add an option plus E. That means if any command is failed. It will not exit at that point. The next commands also can be run. So previously, with default option, this command is failed and it is exited. But now, when we add this plus e option, the next commands also will be executed. So let us try to save this and execute again. Now we can see the output. So here, even the command is failed, it has not exited at that point. The next commands also executed. Here we can capture the result, which is non-zero. Since it is non-zero, we are saying that the script is failed and exiting. So now the job is exited with a proper custom message. So this is what we expect. So let us change the script again and remove that extra command and commit the changes. So let us execute the job again. Here we can see that the job is successful. So since there is no failure in the script, the result is zero. It is printing the script is successful. So this is one way of capturing the result of a shell script. But generally, this script may return different values like success or failure, or a true or false based on the business requirements. So if we have written values, we can add those in the if conditions, and accordingly we can take decision when to close the job properly, even if it is a success or a failure. And there are other ways in which the script can write some values to some log file. So we can capture some of the values in the log file, and we can compare them with the expected values, and we can take decision whether to close the job properly with a success or a failure. But these are all beyond the scope of this video. So in this video, we have seen how to execute a shell script, which is present in a Jenkins agent. We also have seen how to execute the shell script if it is present in the GitHub. And we can see how to send the parameters for a script, and we have also seen how to capture the output from a script, and accordingly we can take decisions to exit the job with a success or a failure message. I hope this video helps. Thanks a lot for watching.